Hello everyone, this is Dr. Nicholas Malofsky, and I am reporting from Bad Elf, and I am bringing you another Bad Elf training video. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing two uh, very important points about the Bad Elf Flex. Perhaps you've gotten your new Bad Elf Flex in the mail, and you would like to know how to, number one, turn on your extreme accuracy mode uh, with a token, and or two, you would like to engage your RTK corrections via Entrip. In this video, I will be showing you how to do both of those things. One, engage your Bad Elf token, and two, set up your Entrip RTK corrections. Please note that any type of GPS testing should be done outside with a clear view of the sky. We need to have a GPS lock for this all to work correctly. You'll know you have a GPS lock when the uh, light on the front of your flex in the center is green. If that is green and good to go, secondly, we need to double check and make sure that our Bluetooth settings are appropriately connected. So I've gone into my settings screen, I've gone into Bluetooth, and I can see here that I am connected to the correct flex with the serial number 144718. I also have a blue light on the right side of the front of my flex, indicating that I have correctly paired the devices. Next, I am going to start the Bad Elf Flex app. Because the Bad Elf Flex app um, has already uh, been connected with the Bad Elf Flex itself, it should connect automatically. Now you can see here that I am currently operating in the accuracy mode called Standard. So what I need to do is I'm going to click the accuracy mode settings screen. I'm going to go down to the last section where it says flex tokens. Now what I want to show you quickly is how to load more flex tokens on your device if you do not have any. So you can click the load more flex token button and you can either scan a QR code from the physical uh, token itself or type in an eight character code uh, that is provided. Note that we provide uh, tokens in both uh, hard, kind of credit card format, but also uh, via email. So you can always go back and get your QR code or eight character code if need be. So let's go ahead and type in the eight character code. So bear with me for just a second as I type this in. Assuming I have typed this in and there is no typos, I should be able to click done. And notice that this card is saying that the flex token card with that ID number has four tokens. And I can either transfer all four tokens to the flex right now, or I can say do three, or I could do two, or I could do one. It's up to you. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add an additional token to the flex. Remember, tokens are uh, utilized for 24 hours of extreme accuracy. So I'm going to click the transfer one flex token now. Please confirm that you would like to transfer the token. Click yes. You'll see the transferring screen come up. The transfer to the battle flex was successful and I can click dismiss. Now previously I had a token already enabled uh, or already in the system so I have two total tokens now. Don't be confused just because you have a token ready does not mean you've used it. So next, we need to actually, under the token status screen, click the use token to turn on extreme accuracy. Are you sure? If you click yes, it's a one-time shot. The 24-hour countdown is going to begin. So make sure you're on your job site and you are ready to collect data if you're going to do this. I click yes. I hear two beeps from the flex itself. And then you will notice that on the accuracy screen, it has gone from standard and orange to green and extreme. So now because I'm in this accuracy mode, I am able to use RTK via Ntrip. So I went ahead and selected RTK via Ntrip, uh, the second option under accuracy mode. Next, um, I'm going to actually go to the Ntrip screen. So I've engaged the extreme accuracy. Next, it's time to make sure that my Ntrip settings are correct. Once you click the end trip setting screen at the top right hand corner, you'll notice we're under the configuration screen that um, you see network and mount point. So I have already set up a network here. If you have not done this before, this will be empty. But let's go ahead and click that uh, first selection under configuration. And you'll notice that it says host, port, user ID, passport, and mount point. 
the host and port will be unique uh, pieces of information that you receive directly from the RTK provider, the, the service that you are going to use. The host could either be a website address like you see here, uh, what we use here in Arizona, or it could be an IP address. Additionally, the port is a standard port that's going to be utilized to access these corrections via the internet. So remember too that NTRIP is a fancy way to say you are connecting via the internet um, to an RTK service that is going to provide you corrections via NTRIP to this device. Next, depending on your specific user ID and password, you're going to put that in those third and fourth boxes. And last but not least, you're going to need to select your mount point. So if you are connected to the internet and you have put in the correct network host, port, user ID, and passport, pass, uh, password, you will be able to click the mount point option to uh, configure your mount point. You may be asking yourself, what the heck is a mount point? Think of a mount point as being your base. It is where the corrections are uh, uh, essentially coming from. The key here is you always want to pick a mount point that is as close as possible to where you are. What you're going to notice here is that we list the mileage to that mount point, or what's called a core station, a continually operating recording station, and you would want to connect to the closest one possible. That's going to usually provide you the best accuracy. Anything over a 20 mile distance, what we call a baseline, is going to inherently um, propagate more error into your correction. Additionally, please understand that there are also services like VRS RTCM3, which I just selected there. Um, there's also um, options called RTCM3 IMAX, which is below that green highlight. These are virtual reference stations using an amalgamation of different mount points to create a virtual one. So if you select a mount point that is very close to you and it doesn't seem to be working, I always recommend trying the VRS or RTCM3 options as secondary. So I'm going to go ahead and click this first one, AZCS. I know that actually stands for Arizona Scottsdale. So I'm only about two miles away from that mount point. Know that you can do a save as, and so if I wanted to save this as AZCS, because I say I'm going to use this quite often, I can do a save as. Uh, saving multiple profiles, uh, depending where you are geographically or what type of settings you're using, is highly recommended. So once you've got all of your NTRIP network settings in, you've made a save for your profile, click the back NTRIP button in the top middle of your screen, and under the configuration, the third option, it says not connected to NTRIP server. I'm going to click the little radial button and I'm going to cross my fingers that I've put in everything correctly. And if I did, what you'll see is five check marks appear on your screen. So it's transferring data, everything is connected properly, valid messages are happening, and the bad elf inevitably is using the corrected data. You can see again under extreme or accuracy mode, you see that it says extreme. Under NTRIP, you see that it says connected in use. You can see that we're currently operating with about 15 of 41 satellites, and our estimated accuracy horizontally is 0.2 inches. So if I click the GPS fix screen, you can see that I am uh, using RTK. You can see that my correction type is RTCM3. Uh, and so you can look through here and know that I am correctly connected to my RTK system. So quickly, just once again, just reviewing, make sure number one, you're outside and you've got a GPS uh, lock, green light. Two, make sure you are Bluetooth paired with your device, you've got a blue light. Number three, you're going to either, either need to enable a bad elf token for 24 hours to access extreme accuracy mode, or two, if you have an extreme flex that's unlocked permanently, you would not need to use a extreme accuracy token. And the reason we're using the extreme accuracy token, let me mention, is that under the extreme accuracy mode, we connect our, our collect data in multi-frequency, multi-band. So we're collecting data with L1, L2, and L5 frequencies, which mean we can then post-process the data with Opus. So, Again, make sure that you use that token or have an extreme flex so you can use Opus as a post-processing service. And then last but not least, input your NTRIP credentials 
connect to the NTRIP um, server, make sure you've got internet connectivity to your tablet or phone, and if you're working and everything is going according to plan, you should see a screen like you do on my Flex app right now. If you have any questions about what you just saw or listened to, please feel free to reach out to me or the Bad Elf team at sales at bad-elf.com. That's sales, S-A-L-E-S, at bad-elf.com. Additionally, please feel free to follow us on any of the social media platforms or find other additional videos on YouTube. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everybody. We'd love to hear from you. Have a good one.